The race for the White House has moved to the battleground state of Pennsylvania. But while Joe Biden is off the campaign trail today, he sent someone who knows Washington well. Barack Obama has spent time uh, in Philadelphia campaigning for Mr. Biden. It's Mr. Obama's first in-person campaign appearance. Meantime, Donald Trump's latest rally was also in Pennsylvania. He was in the city of Erie, where, again, he's downplayed the severity of COVID-19. Instead, he's focused on economic recovery and warned of a Biden depression. He's also accused Mr. Biden of being corrupt and pushed for the attorney general to open criminal investigations ahead of the election. With just two weeks until Election Day, officials across the United States are already sorting millions of mail-in ballots. National opinion polls show Mr. Biden holding a steady lead on President Trump. But the contest is closer in the swing states like Pennsylvania. The two candidates are also preparing for the final presidential debate. That's on Friday morning, Singapore, Hong Kong time. Our correspondent, Nick Harper, joins us now from Washington, D.C. for more. Good morning, Nick. Lots of attention going to voters in those swing states as the clock starts to run out here. What can we expect from Mr. Obama's rally? Well, John, this is going to be a big one for Team Biden. Uh, President Obama has done events virtually so far for the Biden campaign. He even gave a primetime speech during the convention a month or so back. But this is the first in-person event. It's a drive-in rally. So people turn up in their cars, they remain in their cars, they look at President Obama speaking on stage, and they tune in on their radio to hear what he's saying. They're doing that to try and keep social distancing, to make sure that people aren't gathered in crowds. We're expecting the president to encourage early voting. We've already seen a lot of that. At least 36 million people have already cast their votes uh, two weeks out from the election. He's also going to encourage uh, black voters to get out their vote and likely touch on the idea that Democrats are slightly fearful, with Biden leading in the polls, that there may be an issue of complacency. The Democrats may simply say, well, look, I don't need to go out and vote. If Biden's doing very well, I'll stay at home. Now, in contrast, of course, President Trump uh, has also been to Pennsylvania. He was in the northwest industrial corner of the state, Erie, Pennsylvania. His rally looked very different. There was lots of people gathering together, no real social distancing. Some people were wearing masks, certainly, but not all of them by any means. Uh, and he has continued to downplay the virus, saying once again that the US is turning a corner, even though we're continuing to see infections and deaths rise. Pennsylvania is very important. Donald Trump managed to flip it from the Democrats back in 2016. Biden is hoping to flip it back this time around. At the moment, the polls are narrowing, narrowing between the two, but President uh, uh, Trump is trailing Joe Biden 49 percent to 45 percent. Nick, let's look ahead to the final presidential debate on Friday morning uh, Singapore time. We know that Mr. Trump is unhappy with the uh, mute button that could be used, but he's also unhappy with what he'll get to debate about. Uh, tell us more about that. Yeah, that's right, Steve. We're going to have six topics over the 90 minutes. At the start of each topic, the candidates will have two minutes uninterrupted to lay out their case. And that will be the time when their opponent will be muted. After that, uh, it's a free for all. They can say whatever they want. But President Trump is unhappy that foreign policy is not a specific topic. They've written to the debate commission to complain about this. Now, we do have national security as one of the issues. And that's where Team Trump are likely to want to capitalise. They feel that foreign policy is a weak point uh, for Joe Biden. They feel that it's a strong point for President Trump. They look uh, to things like the normalization of relations between Israel and the UAE and Bahrain just a few weeks ago. They look to President Trump meeting Kim Jong-un, pushing back against Xi Jinping with those tariffs uh, and also pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal. The debate itself on Thursday night, we're hoping that it will be a less fractious affair than the other one. There was lots of interrupting, uh, lots of disagreements and lots of personal attacks. It is important because it's the final prime time slot for both candidates to lay out their case to the American public to say why they should be voted into office. Uh, and of course, for President Trump, uh, he will be hoping to win over some undecided voters out there. But there's likely not many people out there who have not yet made up their minds. But the ones who haven't, 
probably could make a very big difference to the election. And that's why it's important for both candidates to really state their case uh, and to do so without interruptions. Okay, thanks for that update. Nick Harper speaking to us from Washington, D.C.